So moving forward a few more years then, um, you went to China. You were the first American to perform for the Miss Tourism World Pageant. How did you land that gig? That was an epic gig. <laughs> it was so fun. That was, how did I land that gig? That was networking. That was a networking okay. thing. You know, that's the thing that, you know, if we're, if we're doling out advice, that's a real pillar of this industry is, um, you know, I started performing in, in China to open five-star hotels. So, for example, we, there was a new Four Seasons coming into Hunan province, and they do these amazing, gorgeous, elaborate shows. And I was the, um, you know, banquet hall. They, they transform it into this beautiful pyrotechnic, you know, amazing show. But it's essentially the ballroom, you know. And so I would do these ballroom shows and they were so easy. It was like two shows and people were just so happy and sort of drunk and like, but it was a great show. And then we would tour uh, all of that local area because they were smaller emerging market. Um, and it was a blast. So I had I had gotten known throughout the booking agents of which I don't know if maybe there was 20 at the time. And they uh, they knew that I was uh, put on a good show, that I was fun to be around, that, you know, that I was going to be easygoing enough to to deal with and um, and that the show was good. And so they told each other, you know, then. And so that was kind of how that happened this agent was doing the Miss Tourism World pageant with the TV show, uh, with the live show, and also this this beauty pageant, which was in the most beautiful, it was in Wugong Mountains. It was, the show was placed in the base of Wugong Mountains. Oh, wow. Sounds amazing. And they built a full uh, 20-story waterfall that was the back of the stage. What? And the water just flowed and they had a moat in the front and lights and epic, epic. <laughs> Such that a sounds beautiful. amazing. And then all of us girls, all the, oh, they were so cute. And all the little <laughs> beauty queens, you know, that was my world before. So I really, you know, so we would do a rehearsal on this stage in the mountains with the water flowing. And then we would go like climb the Wugong mountains, you know, with beauty pageants, they have like a local event. You have to do all the fun local events. And so we went to uh, the Wugong mountains and me and I don't know, 40 um, young, beautiful, like not physically able to get to the top. None of us could get to the top of that mountain. <laughs> oh, we're like, what bless. Is this? And we were really suffering, but uh, we climbed the mountain and then it was in an area that had a lot of hot springs. So they had, the, so we would do our rehearsal. Everything would be going great. I was, you know, the musical performance. It was not a, a hard gig at all. And then we went to the local hot springs and it was the, you know, the water that comes out from the earth and mm -hmm. they were, so fun so <laughs> fun it reminds me yeah. of iceland a little bit because they've got a lot of hot springs over there as well <laughs> yes there's an area they pay, they did a really a wonderful job researching where to put the put the um uh, put the pageant but it was a really beautiful area there was a lot of natural hot springs and all of these cool resorts were there where you would come and then you'd drink papaya juice and like you know it was so nice it was oh, really fun you're giving me like travel envy again now <laughs> oh man i i have so much that's why i'm literally telling you this story i have so much of that i'm watching all the travel shows and I think everyone's watching travel shows. I mean, I'm just looking, I've got a whole, before I started really doing YouTube, I have like, I did a lot of travel vlogs just because they were for my own purpose to look back on in years to come and just see what I got up to and with my kid yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So it's like a little, little memento, my legacy, if you like. Um, oh, and nice. I have like a whole shelf that's dedicated to all these DVDs just stacked right across. I'm like, yeah, fancy watching this one today. <laughs> it's just, it's What's great. Your favorite? What's your favorite spot? Oh, it depends on my mood. I'm, I've, yeah. I, not as a rule, but I've always thought I would never go back to the same place twice because I think, you know, you got money to spend. You okay. want to go and see different places. Absolutely. I'm with you. I am with you. Having said that. So which that, one was the most epic? I think Iceland is one of my favorite okay. places. It's Fact. just so diverse. And depending oh on what time God. of year you go, that yeah. same place that you visit can look completely different. So it's just really absorbing all of that. 
But well, also the Philippines as well. I have quite a big heart for the Philippines because yeah. a lot of my audience is based out there. That's the same with Rio and, and Jonah and yeah. everyone else. So it's just nice. It's like a second life out there. So I get to kind of mingle with people, meet some artists, go and see the islands. And it's just, oh, it's just another, God. another kind of trip entirely. So I think Iceland and the Philippines are two of my, two of my favorite places to go. Place. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. Those are on my list. <laughs> yeah, For definitely. Sure. Try I haven't it. been to either of them and I've always wanted to. Oh, you should, you should definitely do it. I think the Philippines has a massive um, music culture as well. So if you want oh, to try and. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. We'll try and get you out there. <laughs> okay, Rhea. Okay, Rhea. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So back on to China. Um, you had a TV show called The Ambassador, which was well received by critics and viewers. Tell us more about the show. Yeah, The Ambassador was a travel show, uh, which based on the performances in different uh, parts of the country and more rural up and coming cities in China. And it was a tra- it was based on they had a travelogue show that on uh, their English channel, and so we and a crew would the crew would basically follow my my shows, and um, because they I was performing in these interesting cities and doing fun things, and every show I do benefited a local charity. So we would go into a lot of times a local orphanage and. Um, and I would harangle the new um, hotel opener, uh, the new hotel owner, to give money to the charity. Um, and so we we really, um, you know, it was a really nice way to share with uh, all of China some of the different charities, the wonderful charities that were happening in China. Now, having said that, I'm not sure that the communist government really loved all of that exposure. Mm. So it was a one year short lived uh, TV show, which I loved and people <laughs> did really like it, but they loved it for a year and it was the kibosh. And I did hear that, um, you know, we went to um, Hebei is a city nor- in northern China. And we went to a, a village, a smaller village that was affected by the AIDS crisis and weren't ever able to get the antiretrovirals. So there, you know, we we may have steps, you know, stepped into some things that they, the communist government, you know, CCTV is a national TV station. And in a lot of ways, they really do keep close tabs of things. Mm. And um, so, yeah, so that got the, <laughs> it, was, uh, <laughs> it was good while it lasted. Yeah. And you did manage to do some outreach programs to the charities. So that's always good. It was good. And, and, you know, it was sort of following what I was doing anyways. Um, but I was really glad that was my favorite part to be able to share um, with a wider audience, you know, because that brings more, um, more people donating and volunteering and mm-hmm. yeah, exposure. Yeah. 